What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Week 2 XFL Power Rankings, first version of this uh, little series. It was very well received. I think you guys really appreciated the XFL Power Rankings. Week 2 of the XFL was just as exciting as Week 1, in my opinion, if not even better. Really enjoying this league, and I hope you guys are too, and excited to be able to make content about it. So let's get into the action. A quick reminder, please do hit that like button if you enjoy, if you learn a thing or two, and also tell your friends about the power rankings. Why not? Help uh, spread the love, share the content. My goal is to reach 50,000 subscribers by the end of the NFL draft season. All right, so number eight, we've got a new team at the bottom. It's the Tampa Bay Vipers almost said Buccaneers. Got to be careful not to do that in these power rankings. They are 0 2. They've got quarterback problems. Uh, it was uh, Aaron Murray week one. It was something called a Taylor Cornelius this week. Thought they'd be going to Quinton Flowers at quarterback. You know, it's the XFL. There's not good offensive lines. Go to the mobile athletic quarterbacks that can elude pressure and create plays outside of rhythm. That's not Taylor Cornelius here. But the biggest thing for me is just the disconnect in this league. Not just, the, the, sorry, the disconnect with what wins in this league with this team. Not just the pocket passing quarterback thing here, but they've got these slow plotting running backs. Jaquez Patrick, Davion Smith. Like why? You want speed in this league. It's much closer to the college game. So, they're 0-2. I think this is the worst team in the league pretty clearly. They might have some of the cooler jerseys in the league, but this team really kind of stinks. Number 7, the LA Wildcats. They're going to stay put here at the number 7 spot. Now, I do have to apologize. I completely had oversight on Josh Johnson not playing, returning. Uh, he, he did play better this week. A veteran quarterback. I actually got some starts for the Washington Redskins uh, a little bit under two years ago, and, and wasn't that bad. So, I do think they're a step up from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They can move the ball offensively. Uh, the problem is this defense is probably the worst defense in the NFL. And outside of Nelson Spruce on offense, they don't really have a whole lot to go to. Uh, Storm Norton might be the less le uh, best left tackle in this league, so they do have at least a quarterback wide receiver tackle duo to work off of. Uh, but the big problem here is the coverage just stinks here for the LA Wildcats. Really got lit up by P.J. Walker week one, and then couldn't really hold their own against uh, Landry Jones and the Dallas Renegades this week as that game went on. So they're going to stay put at number seven. Number six is Seattle Dragons. They're going to climb up two spots. Now, I still don't believe in their quarterback. Brandon Silvers was not particularly great this week. Really just made one throw uh, to Keenan Reynolds. Uh, but they did beat the Tampa Bay Vipers, kind of proving uh, that they are a more capable football team. Their defense is actually pretty legit. You got a couple guys in there, guys like Kyle Cairo, uh, Godwin Igwebu, oh my gosh, Godwin Igwebuike. Now, I struggle with his name, but I'm actually kind of familiar with him. I liked him coming out. I think it was the 2017 draft class out of Northwestern, like 5'11", 215 safety. They had him playing a lot of free safety in this game, but he's a really flexible kind of hybrid defender. Same with Kyle Cairo, who's a converted college safety as well. So they've got some versatility with what they can do in the second level of this defense, which is really nice, kind of similar to the actual Seattle Seahawks in that way with guys like Bobby Wagner. Um, but also Jeremy Clark, I ripped on him in the week one show, but he did have a good week, targeted three times, no receptions this week. Now, he's still a six foot four corner who ran a 5.02.40, so I don't know how great he's gonna be. But I do kind of like how the Seattle Dragons are almost replicating the Seattle Seahawks style of defense uh, with those big lengthy press corners and some really athletic uh, second level defenders as well. Uh, so they're going to climb up two spots. Then number five, the New York Guardians. They're going to drop two spots here. Really big problems being revealed with the quarterback situation here. Now, I still think this is a pretty good defense. Uh, unfortunately, they were on the field the entire game and were, ran into one of the best offenses in the league in the D.C. Defenders. So they're going to drop down two spots. Uh, you know, Those that watched this game definitely got entertainment from the Guardians this week. Matt McGloin, uh, again, a, a team going with a slow, plotting, pocket-passing quarterback. Like, why? Why would you do that? Offensive lines are so bad. It's not like Matt McGloin is Tom Brady mentally, uh, accuracy, like all this stuff. Doesn't make any sense to not go with an athletic, scrambling quarterback in this league. Uh, so they sucked on offense in the first half. And then <laughs> Matt McGloin comes out, 
in the interview at halftime, we got to change everything. We got to redo our whole game plan. Well, what does the coach say to that? You're benched. We're putting in Marquise Williams, much more athletic. Uh, I think Marquise Williams could be a spark for the Guardians offensively. Thing is, this defense is still really good. So I do think they'll be all right. Uh, Ola, Ola Bunmi Rotimi is kind of a, a hybrid uh, edge outside linebacker guy. Uh, one of the best defensive players in the league. Definitely a guy coming out of Old Dominion, maybe kind of oversight through the draft process, through training camp. He's a guy that, if he continues this production, will definitely be playing in the NFL next year, at least as a backup. Uh, then we've got the St. Louis Battlehawks at number four. This was tough for me between them and my next team at number three. I think they're very close. The one thing the Battlehawks do have going for them is they do have Jordan Ta'amu, probably the third best quarterback in this league right now behind P.J. Walker, number one, and Cardale Jones, number two. Uh, Ta'amu looked pretty good again this week, so that would be your case for why the Battlehawks should actually be number three, uh, along with the fact that they you know, I'll just spoil it. The Dallas Renegades are number three. They beat them week uh, week one, but Dallas's quarterback, Landry Jones, did not play in that game. So anyway, back to the Battlehawks. They've got a good offense. They also have receivers. Uh, Alonzo Russell and uh, Demorne Pearson L. Really good duo of wide receivers. So this team can move the ball. I just, the defense there, I do have some question marks. They've got some players there, but they just haven't really been able to put it all together. Uh, got lit up by the Houston Roughnecks, probably the best offense in the league with the best quarterback, but uh, still some question marks on that defense. So that will leave the Dallas Renegades at number three. Now, I think this is just a more complete team. Their defense has showed up a little more. They've got some really good players on that defense. T. Gray Scales, the XFL is perfect for him. He was a total playmaker coming out of, uh, I think it was Indiana. And I had him pretty high on my draft board coming out, but the thing was he did not run well. I think he ran like a 4.8 for a coverage linebacker. Well, the speed difference doesn't hurt him quite as much at this level, and he can really maximize on those playmaking abilities. So he looks really good. You got Greer Martini. He was competing in Green Bay. Uh, with like Blake Martinez and all those scrubs uh, in Green Bay. Uh, and he almost won out that starting job uh, about a year ago. So really good linebacker duo here for the Dallas Renegades. And then Donatello Brown. Uh, I don't know if they have Packers connections or what, but here's a, he was another guy that was kind of competing for playing time a couple years ago uh, when the secondary in Green Bay was really bad. And he made some plays uh, when he got on the field. He, I think he actually may have even started that NFC Championship game against the Falcons uh, and went reps against Julio Jones. Now he got worked, but um, that experience is showing here. So the, the defense has some playmakers there. Uh, and then offensively, they get Landry Jones back this week. Now, he's not particularly good. And I was poking fun. They were losing early. They had three points at halftime. Um, you know, I was poking fun at Landry Jones again. Like, why would you make a slow pocket-passing quarterback who's not particularly accurate, still makes terrible decisions? Like, he threw some really dumb picks in this game. Um, why would you put him back there as opposed to a guy that can sense pressure and run around and create plays? Well, he did make a couple really nice throws in the second half, almost immediately after I sent that tweet. Uh, they also have some really good running backs, Cameron Artis Payne, Lance Dunbar. Dunbar, a guy that's probably stuck here in the XFL, like he's kind of run his course. He had some years in Dallas as their receiving back. Um, but Cameron Artis Payne is interesting. He sat behind Jonathan Taylor for how long did it feel like he was a fantasy sleeper? Like, if anything happens to Jonathan Taylor, look out for Cameron Artis Payne, kind of a solid athlete coming out of the SEC. Never got his opportunity, just kind of slowly got flushed out of the NFL. Well, here he is. He's looking like one of the best running backs in this league. So you got that going. And then keep an eye on this guy, Donald Parham, six foot eight, 257 pounds, slot wide receiver, kind of that hybrid tight end type. Uh, he had 11 targets, five receptions, uh, 76 yards, and a touchdown in this game really intriguing player uh, to have that type of mismatch in this kind of league. So uh, Dallas to me just has some really intriguing players. I wish their quarterback was a little better, uh, but I am going to put them here as the third best team in this league, the preseason favorites to win the XFL. Uh, and then number two, the Houston Roughnecks. Now, no disrespect to Philip Walker in this offense. It is the most exciting thing the XFL has going for it right now. 
Um, I just think the DC defenders, who will come in number one in a second, are a more well-rounded team. Houston's defense has shown some flaws. Um, but yeah, Philip Walker right now looks like the XFL version of Patrick Mahomes. He is absolutely electric. He's got a receiver in Cam Phillips coming out of Virginia Tech, uh, who looks like one of the better receivers in this league. So they have it going on offense. They also have this Nick Hawley guy um, is like the XFL's version of Christian McCaffrey, a white running back that they put in the slot. So you got your XFL Patrick Mahomes on this team and your XFL Christian McCaffrey. This team to me is absolutely going to compete for the championship in this league. Um, I, I think defensively, they got a few things to figure out. They got some players on that side of the ball, so you could certainly make a case for them as the best team. Uh, the thing is, the DC defenders have had two convincing wins now. Full, the, the Definitely the most well-rounded team in the league right now. They have a great defense, could make a case for the best defense in the league. They did get Matt McGloin this week. That's why they put up a shutout. Uh, but they got some players on defense, but that offense can really move as well. Um, Cardale Jones, like I said, the second best quarterback in this league to me, a guy kind of trying to reinvigorate some of that hype to get himself back into the NFL. I, I don't know. I think he might just be an XFL superstar, which is great, um, especially for this league. Uh, so he, he's looked really good two weeks in a row. And then they've got a ton of playmakers on offense. That's what I like the most about this team. That's why I picked this team to be my DC defenders before the season started. Um, you got Rashad Ross, looks great. DeAndre Tompkins um, looks really good. You got Eli Rogers, Donnell Pumphrey. They got speed on this offense and even a little experience there with a guy in Eli Rogers and Rashad Ross as well. Uh, so DC is going to come in as the number one team. Uh, so those are the XFL power rankings this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what you think, where you agree, where you disagree. Uh, please do hit that like button. Cheers, as always, and we'll see you for the next one. Peace.